Hello everyone, welcome back to Silver Star Arcade and more the Great Ace Attorney. In the last episode, we agreed to defend Mr. Soseki Natsume, I believe is his name. And today, after what feels like forever, we are finally going to trial. 20th February, 9.23 AM, the Old Bailey Defendants. I still don't know how to pronounce that. Um, and I'm worried that my audio might be too quiet. How's that? Is that better? Hopefully that's not too loud. Oh well, I guess we'll find out. Well, I never expected this. Who'd have thought we'd be back here again so soon? We are on a study tour of Great Britain with the intention of learning the country's legal practices. In order to research the latest court procedures here, we need as much court experience as possible. <laughs> well, yes, I suppose that's true, but... For the person in the dock, it may well be his or her one and only time in court, and it could be life-changing. In which case, treating it as research may seem a little... crass? Oh, when you put it like that, you're quite right. G good morning! Hey, it's my favorite character so far. Ah, Mr. Natsume, good morning. Oh dear, are you alright? Your eyes are terribly bloodshot. The early bird catches the worm, as they say here in Britain. Wait a minute, wait, wait. The early bird catches the worm, as they say here in Britain. Yes, I've heard that expression. But I really don't want to catch a worm. So I tried desperately not to wake up early, but I was so worried I couldn't catch a wink. I'm pretty sure that's the voice. And now, I'm absolutely exhausted as a result. Do all literary people take things so... literally? Thank you for putting your faith in us today, Mr. Natsumi. Ah, cheer up, Soseki. I, I wish I had nine lives. My whole future hangs in the balance. I'm... Too terrified to tremble! Really? Because I can feel tremors in the floor. I can't do this. I can't take it. Although, locum student Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. Um, yes? I caught a glimpse of the public gallery as I walked by the courtroom. It looked like the opening night of the opera. There were so many people. I had no idea my case was such a notorious affair here in London. Oh, um, neither did I. Do you know why that might be, Miss Sosoda? I'm sorry, Mr. Naruhodo, but I have no idea. So that all known look on your face is just coincidence then, is it? Don't hide the truth from me! It's... it's... It's because of the Reaper, isn't it? Lord Von Zeeks? Is is that right, Mrs. Sir? I purchased as many different newspapers as I could find this morning, and yes. Lord Von Zeeks is on the front page of every one. I I knew it. Sometime after the prosecutor was dubbed the Reaper of the Bailey, he stopped appearing in court, it seems. It's been several years now, in fact, until the day before yesterday. Yes, Inspector Gregson told us something similar, didn't he? Oh, fudge, I forgot I have to voice him again. The trial two days ago marked Lord Von Zeke's return to the courtroom after a very long hiatus. The trial of Magnus McGilded. What a harrowing experience that was. You're telling me! I believe that appearance made even greater waves here in the capital than today's. I 
believe that appearance made even greater waves here in the cabinet. What? I, I'm sorry, I don't understand that sentence. But we wouldn't have realized, of course, having only just arrived in the country. Why is the Reaper back in the Bailey so soon, for what appears to be a mundane murder? That's the question the papers are asking, and they are all speculating various answers. M mundane Mundane? It's the most significant saga of the century to some of us! Oh dear, I, I meant no offense, Mr. Natsume, but that is how the papers are describing it. Well, lest we also forget the fact that it could spark an international incident. Obviously, the reappearance of this infamous prosecutor has caught people's attention. But there's another blatant similarity with the trial of two days ago. Yes, I agree. Local student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. It's you! Me? Well, I suppose that's true. Both times, it is you who stands against this legendary prosecutor. It... it can only mean... That you're friends with the Reaper! Please? I don't rub shoulders with... with... Deathbringers. I'm afraid that there's really only one other explanation. It can only be another example, Mr. Narahodo, of your uncommon bad luck. Thanks for that! Oh, this is just my luck! Why must I be represented by a man with such a frail fortune? By the least lucky lawyer alive! Well, let's not forget that it was you, Mr. Natsumi, who asked me to represent you. Huh? Oh shit! <laughs> yes, it's true that I'm just a student, new to London, with little in the ways of experience, or skills, or luck. But I promise you this. I will fight your corner until the bitter end. And I will believe in you, Mr. Natsume. Oh, benevolent locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. You're not alone here with us, Mr. Natsume. Whatever happens, we will always be on your side. Oh, benevolent non-locum assistant, Miss Mikoto Mikotoba Esquires. I am in your debt forever. I shall never forget this great kindness you- Mr. Natsumi, counsel for the defense. Oh, fudge, I didn't even get to read that. The court session is about to begin. Kindly make your way into the courtroom at once. Oh no. Alright then, Mr. Natsumi. It's time. Let's go. <laughs> yes! He is dressed very nicely. This is it. My second appearance in a British courtroom. And my second trial against the Reaper. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Aww. Because this time, I won't let my faith waver. I'll believe in my client to the last. Just like you believed in me. I believe I can do this now. I'm ready for this fight. The what would have been even cooler is if instead of taking his sword, we took his headband. Because we don't really get to see the sword, because we don't see we don't see the 3D model from the waist down very often. Uh 20 of February, 10 a.m. the old Bailey courtroom. Whoa! Hey, fair play! In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I just realized, the Queen of England was alive when I started, like, Queen Elizabeth II was alive when I started this Let's Play. Yee. Yeah. Anyway, so I believe that means we're in the Vic- Era? Cause I believe this is referencing Queen Victoria. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. 
This guy is like a man of a million voices. I can't find a voice that suits him. I now call upon the councils for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. Ah, oh, crap. I'm not good at his voice. <clears throat> Alright, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try, let's give it a try. The prosecution is fully prepared, my lord. Nah, uh, no, that's not good. The defense is ready, my lord. Hey, Dracula, how's it going? The Nipponese are, tru are a truly fascinating breed. Sorry, what? Lord Strongheart has told me all about you. That you are a student who arrived in London but two days ago. A mere amateur. Do, do, do you have a point? Being a compatriot, you feel compelled to try and help the accused, I suppose. Typical Nipponese arrogance. Forgive me, but I do not believe arrogance is an appropriate description. Susoto-san. After all, at our previous encounter, the defendant was found to be in innocent. Ooh! Day drinking already. It is 10 in the morning, my man. Very true. And a most fascinating, if dark, trial it was too. The tragic conclusion came later, of course. Here's to the acquitted and his unfortunate violent end. Thank you, Councils. I see both sides are in fine fettle. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are you ready to carry out your duties here in court as impartial members of the public? You never know- Oh wait, wait, no, that wasn't his voice. One second. You never know when you might be down on your luck, but I believe in fair play for everyone. Well, I must- Oh, um. Uh but I must warn you, I'm rather more ruthless than I appear. Oh well, not me. Oh well, not me. What you see is what you get. I'm a peace-loving fellow. I'm afraid to say, I think it's quite... Oh hey, it's her! I'm afraid to say, I think it's quite possible that Mustache Foreigner did the deed. Come on, what are we waiting for? No doubt he did it. No, that's too close to fair play's voice. Hey, sorry, didn't quite catch that. Very well, let us proceed. Your opening stick. Wait, no, fuck. Ah, too many voices. Your open. No, your open statement, if you please, Lord Von Zeeks. Very recently, Great Britain signed an alliance with a rising power in the Far East. The accused in the dark today is a student from that same land, a certain Mr. Soseki Natsume. And while our country has extended this foreign student the warmest of welcomes, regrettably the kindness has not been returned. In fact, this student is accused of a most sinister act. A plunge and a knife into the back of an innocent woman who is doing nothing but walking down the street. A knife crime! I can tell I tell you from bitter experience, those are the worst bloody oaf they are. Just look at that swallow complexion and short stature. He's he's one of those dreadful Japanese. Come on, let's get this over with. With me now, everyone. One, two, three. Eh? Sorry, didn't quite catch that. Pray forgive the discourtesy of smashing my hollowed chalice here in this great chamber. Allow me to call the first witness to the stand. Very well. 
Bailiff, lead the inspector in, please. <gasps> Is it Gregson? Yay, it's Gregson! Your name and occupation, please. Oh, the music! Yes, sir! Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard. Would you please summarize the events of the case for the court inspector? The victim is thought to be a young woman in her 20s by the name of Olive Green. Really? Olive? Not Olivia? Olive? Okay. Olive Green. I beg your pardon, Inspector. Thought to be? Yes. Having been stabbed in the back by her attacker's knife, the victim fell unconscious. That was three days ago now, and she's been comatose ever since. What? So they don't even know who she is for sure? Hmm, comatose, I see. But her life is not in danger? Fortunately for the Eastern student, the charge will not be murder. Pray, elaborate on the details, Inspector. Sir, if I could ask everyone to look at this street map. I feel like I'm doing his voice wrong too. Too many voices. As I mentioned, the incident took place three days ago, around five in the afternoon. It happened on the pavement running alongside Briar Road, a wide through what the a wide thoroughfare for horse-drawn vehicles. It had not long since stopped snowing as the victim, Miss Green, was walking down the street. Out of the blue, she was approached from behind by the accused and stabbed in the back. Luckily, the young lady's life was spared, and she's currently being treated in one of the city's hospitals. But being unconscious as she is, we've been unable to take a statement from her, of course. This is the case file with everything we know about the victim so far. Thank you, Inspector. The court will accept the documents as evidence if you please. The case file has been entered in the court record. A file contained an overview of the case in details about the victim. She was found with a knife in her back and is currently hospital yet to regain consciousness. What a... Actually, uh, let's just look at that now. Details. Young woman rendered unconscious, fallen a stab into the back. Victim, Olivia Green. Stout build, early 20s. Location, pavement by a road, east side, reporting officer, Royal Beat. A royally, royally beat. Uh, that's going to be important. The victim remains unconscious. Her name was gleamed from her personal effects. Other details are unknown. Apart from the single stab wound from a large knife, no other signs of injury were observed. The assailant was seen running away by the reporting officer and was successfully arrested the following day. So the cop did it. Whoever this royally beat guy is, who's probably that weird fancy guy who we saw earlier. Yeah. What of the weapon that was used? Sir, I have that here. It was removed from the victim's back. Ouch, that big thing is starting to make me scared to walk down the street now. With a heavy blade like that, almost anybody would have been able to stab the poor woman. Even the scragged looking soseki san, I suppose. Hmm. A common or garden a common or garden jackknife, I would say. Rather nondescript. Thank you, Inspector. The court accepts the blade as evidence. A large but common place folding knife. It was found lodged in the victim's back. It entered into a court record. Now then, what do we know of the motive? Money or valuables, I presume? From what we can tell by looking at the woman's possessions, it seems like she's a poor student herself. Hard to imagine she would have had anything much worth pinching, my lord. I see. Well, in that case, we were looking at some deep sated resentment toward the victim. I'm afraid I couldn't say. Apart from visiting secondhand bookshops, the defendant, Mr. Natsumi, doesn't appear to get out much. At this moment in time, we haven't been able to establish any sort of connection between him and the victim. That's good for us! Yes! Yes! 
If theft and grievance had been ruled out as the motive, what reason could Mr. Natsumi possibly have had for stabbing the young woman? Yet you arrested the man in spite of that, in a totally unjustified and heavy-handed way. Objection! Objection! Damn! Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging a freshly uncorked bottle into the pub gallery. <laughs> but your words have soured its hollowed banquet. For it is you, my learned friend, who is being heavy-handed here. What? Scotland Yard does not arrest people without good cause. That should be beyond question. Inspector Gregson, the prosecution calls for your formal testimony. Explain to the court precisely why the constabulary came to arrest the Nipponese student. Yes, sir. I know that's not his voice. I know we've heard his voice before because he was there when the uh, carriage went up in smoke, but... I'm still giving him the 90, uh, the 1920s uh, reporter voice. Mr. Natsumi's arrest. As I said, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred, and there was an unusually light fog. Visibility was reasonably good, and there was no one else about but the victim and the accused. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind, and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. Those being a number of old books he'd just bought. He was on his way home from a bookshop, it seems. Ah, oh, I feel like I'm doing his voice wrong, too. It was just a matter of working out who the books belonged to, and we found the bloke to arrest him. You mean you got Herlock? To do it. All the books, you say? Yes, my lord. I have a photograph here of the scene of the of the scene of the crime, taken immediately after the incident. Oh yes, I can clearly see the books to which you are referring. I will take that photographic print as evidence, please, Inspector. Crime scene photo, a photograph of the scene taken by a policeman just after the incident occurred. A large knife can be seen thrust into the victim's back. So you're telling me a police officer saw the woman get stabbed, saw the man who did it, and saw him run away. And yet, instead of giving chase or even helping the woman, his first reaction is to take a picture. You Nipponese are a spineless breed, too cowardly to admit defeat. Yeah, it takes at least two nukes to make him do that. Okay, I've been saying some really weird shit lately, like, I don't know what's going on. Denying everything despite overwhelming co evidence to the contrary. Also, something that they did in World War II. It's okay guys, I can make these jokes. I have Japanese friends. I should give them a call. Ah, but Japan's 13 hours ahead. Oh well. Well, I... Forgive me, Lord Van Zeeks, but the defendant is not denying everything, as you put it. What are you doing, Mrs. Soda? Do go on. Mr. Natsumi has admitted to playing some part in the incident. Isn't that right, Mr. Naruhodo? Well, now that you mention it, when we visited him in prison yesterday, he did tell us what had all happened. As I was walking along that cursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman, wearing a green overcoat she was. And just as I went to overtake her, she suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed onto the cold, hard slabs of stone at my feet. I was terrified I had to get away from there. So I ran 
As fast as my legs would carry me back to my accursed lodgings. <laughs> A green overcoat. Well, that's exactly what the woman in the print is wearing. Oh my! A photographic print in full color! What will the world come up with next? The defendant has done nothing more than admit he fled the scene of a terrifying incident. That does not mean that he's guilty of the heinous crime of stabbing the woman in the back. There was nobody else there at the time. Just the two of them. The victim and the accused. In other words, there is nobody else who could have possibly have stabbed the woman. In f a fact that the accused concedes. Uh. Hmm. It seems this cross-examination could prove to be pivotal, counsel. Proceed, please. Yes, my lord. Nothing for it. I have to use this cross-examination to turn the tables here. It's our only chance. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Oh boy, it's been, uh... Hours since I had to pause it. Well, that's what I get for trying to record in the middle of the day. What time is it? Nine o'clock now. Okay. Uh, so let me just give me a second, everyone. I'm just gonna. Where were we? Uh, my words, there's nobody else who could possibly stab that woman. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're cross examining. Oh, wait. Shoot. What did that just say? Uh, cross-examination, yeah. Mr. Natsumi's arrest, uh, I have to use this cross-examination to turn the tables here, it's our only chance, okay. Alright, so I'm pretty sure I already read all this. Uh, press. Hold it! Ah, that's a bit loud. A lit- a light fog, you say? Well, light for London. You can see the opposite side of the street for once. Not much further, though. That's light, is it? Around these parts, yes. Not something I expect a Japanese fellow like yourself to know, of course. I've read that London is famous for its fog. But in my country, people usually imagine that gives the city a rather beautiful appearance. <laughs> How quaint. Yes, well, it's not something us Londoners tend to romanticize, as I expect you can appreciate. Wait, what? Okay, well, yes, well, it's not something us Londoners tend to romanticize, as I expect you can appreciate. But that's just another sentence I don't understand grammatically. I, I see. At this time of year, the fog causes a large number of accidents, especially when it's heavy. Sometimes you can't even see your own hand at the end of your arm. Indeed, the other day I was very nearly trampled by horses before I could see the carriage they were pulling. <laughs> this is a sign I should definitely remember to stop, look, and listen. However... Uh, man, now I'm all thrown off. It's been hours. However, on the day that concerns us, the fog was somewhat lighter than usual. In fact, no doubt lamented by the accused. Mm. Visibility was good, and there was no one else but the victim Hold it! accused. How are you able to state that with any certainty? Quite simply, my learned friend. Because that is what the witness to this crime has have told us. Wait. I guess it's probably good. Uh, oh wait, witnesses yesterday. Didn't he? I thought there was only one witness. That's right. One of them is a policeman, I believe, from Scotland Yard. That is correct, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> then we must hear their testimony. The prosecution will, of course, call them to the stand, should it be necessary. But wait a minute. At 5 o'clock in the afternoon, in the middle of winter, it would have been dark already. No matter how light the fog might have been, no one could have seen... 
I'm unaware of the situation on your tiny island in the east. But here in the capital city of Great Britain, all main roads are illuminated at night by gas streetlights. Ah! It gets dark at 5 o'clock in the middle of winter? Like, in places like Canada, Russia, and Finland, that would make sense, but Britain? 5 o'clock is dark in winter? Hmm. Figured they'd have a little bit more light. The prosecution believes there would have been ample light by which the witness by which to witness the crime. Quite. I I can never get a voice from. Quite. Here in London, for the first time in history, mankind has completely conquered the darkness. Which means we really need to hear those witnesses' statements. If I could get through the fog of this cross-examination, maybe we'll be able to. It seems the counsel for the defense is taken stock. Continue with your testimony, Inspector. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. Now, let me, um... broken. Oh, look here, Mr. Naruto. Just at the tip. A small piece of the blade appears to be missing. You're right. Well spied, Mrs. Soto. I wonder what could have happened to it. Yes, you you don't think it could still be lodged in the victim, do you? Oh dear, I do hope not. That sounds terribly painful. Oh, is there anything else about the blade? Can't find anything out of place. Oh, so you just use that to close it. Press everything. From behind, you say? That's right. As you can see from this print. Oh, the one we just looked at. <laughs> yes, quite so, Inspector. The handle of the weapon is clearly protruding from the victim's back. And you say this poor woman, Miss Green, remains in a critical condition? Comatose, no less. I'm afraid so, my lord. Yes, she's been she's being treated as at Bart's. I was hopeful that she'd come around before the trial started so I could take a statement, but it wasn't to be. Yes, that is indeed a pity. It would have been most illuminating to hear the victim's own account of the events. Luck is on your client's side, it seems. Look, that on the contrary, my client has been exceedingly unlucky. Your force of tone is seriously undermined by those disturbingly wide eyes, I'm afraid. Ugh. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. Hold it! Mr. Natsumi's belongings, um... I think you'll find it's all there in the photographic print of the crime scene. Yes, the three Yes, the three books on the floor. That's right, my lord. Secondhand books they were. Irreparably damaged after falling in the snow, of course. The accused could easily have carried all three books in one hand. Which means his other hand would have been free to wield a knife, for example. He's very clever, isn't he? What do you mean? He's made it extremely hard for you to assert that Mr. Natsumi had his hands full with his books. 
He's managed to close the one avenue escape we might have had before we even knew it was there. You mean to say that the defendant was holding his belongings as he thrust the knife into the woman's back? That must be what happened, my lord. Yes. Hmm. I don't feel right about these voices. That was being a number of old books he had just bought. It seems he was on his way home from the bookshop. Hold it! The defendant apparently visits a second-hand bookshop on a daily basis. Yes, so I understand. A shop full of old English literature. I commend the accused on the lofty subject matter of his scholarly attention. The bloke's room was stacked floor to ceiling with those musty old books. Can you tell us more about the bookshop in question, please, Inspector? Well, if I must... Well, I'll have... I'll have to ask you to look at the street map again, I'm afraid. Where is it? The closest second-hand bookshop to the accused lodging is this place here. Bourbon Books. A little place on the corner of Briar Road and... Meersham Street? As it happens, the accused is currently living in lodgings on the other side of Briar Road at the opposite end. Which means it doesn't take a genius to work out the route he would have taken home. Something like this. Wait a minute. Street map for the local area showing location that level. Okay. Why wouldn't he just... Hmm... Yes, I concur with your conclusion, Inspector. The defendant would certainly have passed the scene of the crime on his way home from that particular shop. Mr. Narahodo, I think that what the inspector just told us could, not, could turn out to be a vital... Be of vital importance. I can't talk. Yes, I agree. The most important point of the inspector just made be in... Uh... It's location. Duh. The crucial detail we just told the court inspector is the location of the bookshop. I couldn't agree more. So, where is it exactly? Eh? Are you winding me up, sunshine? I just explained that. I got the map out and everything. Used red, bloom, and ink and drew the bloke's route home on for ya. And I distinctly remember seeing you nod along, counsel. Oh, it, yes, yes, of course. I must have been so nervous I didn't take it in. The blunder of the day goes to you, my learned friend. No, 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 not yet. The trial's only just begun, after all. Mr. Narahodo, I would strongly advise you to look carefully through the court record at this stage. Yes, miss, I once miss. Sorry, made a mistake, miss. Inspector, continue with your testimony, please. Just a matter of working out who the books belong to, and we found the bloke to arrest him. Hold it! You asked for the help of the famous detective Herlock Sholmes to locate the defendant, I believe. Stuff and nonsense. Sorry? That jack in the office, that busybody, just comes and sticks his oar in whenever we ask, whether we ask him or not. But, but according to what I have here, Mr. Sholmes was shown to the scene by Scotland Yard detectives. Well, that was nothing to do with me. The lads at the scene must have done it without my permission. Uh, I tell him time and time again, whenever something happens, send word to headquarters. Then follow your blooming instructions. I see. If that Miller gets his hands on any details, we'll all be reading it in the Rants magazine next month. And you can bet your last farthing that I'll be in there too, striped of all my hard work on the case. Yes, Mr. Sholmes. No, Mr. Sholmes. Aren't you clever, Mr. Sholmes? That's all the things I'll be getting. Inspector, if the man has proven detrimental to the yard's activities, perhaps I should step in and deal with him? Ah! It appears Inspector Gregson is lost for words. Yes, the Reaper's words carry a lot of weight, obviously. 
Anyway, the point is this. That little Japanese bloke's already admitted it. He admitted that those books all over the pavement at the scene were the ones he bought that day. Hmm. What do you think, Mr. Narahodo? If you're unable to sway the jury there in this cross-examination, I'm afraid... ...that Mr. Natsumi's fate will be sealed? Yes, yeah, they're sure to find him guilty. So, one way or another, I have to expose an undeniable inconsistency in the inspector's testimony. As I said, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and it occurred, and there was a new delight falling. This wheel was good. Stab from the Uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, because he wouldn't have been... Yeah, it's this one, because he wouldn't have been able to stab her from the... Wait. Uh, I should make a save first. Okay, um, local map. Whoops, no, uh, objection! There we go. Oh, no, got it wrong. Ah, oh, I should have read that. That probably would have been funny. I'm sorry, guys. I'm like, Super out of it today. Well, not today, because I was really into it when I first started this recording. Uh, step from the pavement. The accused ran. Okay, all right, here. Let me. Your books. 17th February, 4.45 p.m. Tender receipts. Okay. Pavement of Briar Road, East Side. Wait a minute, um... Then... is this... Pavement Briar Road, East Side. Is it this? The fact that it was 445? He just bought. He was nice. Uh, could it be this? Like, it shouldn't have taken him 15 minutes to walk down one street. Objection! What implications, counsel? Nothing strikes me that. Man, I suck at this. You guys are probably yelling at your screens right now. Soda, give me a hint. What do you think? Undeniable inconsistency. As I said, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred. Usually late fog. It was good. There's someone else around the victim of 
confused out of the blue. Oh, wait a minute. Um, here's a dumb idea. Here's a dumb idea. Objection! Nope. I thought maybe it was the fact that there was no fog in the picture. So it's got to be something to do with the local map. Objection. Okay, I'm going to take a... F All right, I'm going to pause the recording and actually think about this, because I should not be this dumb. I genuinely can't figure this out, and I guess that's what happens to your mind when there's hours in between when you paused and unpaused. So we're just gonna um, do this on each one until we get it right. Objection! Stab from behind and collapsed on the pavement. The accused ran off, scattering all his belongings. as being a little book he just bought. He was on his way home from a bookshop, it seems. Just my work out who the books belong to. Objection! Ah, this is annoying. Like, usually it's obvious what the inconsistency is, but like, unless I just haven't been paying attention for the entire case. Like, what do we have for evidence? A local map. Two book, or three books, which lines up 445, the instant... There's no inconsistency in what he's saying. Objection! Jeff, so it's not the time. Good God, is this annoying. I am an idiot. Well, not really. It's a small detail, and you know, usually the game doesn't lie to your face or tells you when you've messed up. Um, but yeah, so what you gotta do, and I didn't look this up, this was just through pure trial and error, is we have to go back and press this statement again. So we're just gonna skip through this. Um, basically, get to a part where he asks. Get to the part where it shows us the three things, because bourbon books, right? And he shows us where everything is, shows us the path he takes home, right? Yep, he passes the scene of the crime. Vital of importance, yes, the most important point. 
and you're not supposed to pick this and usually when you're given an option like this it'll tell you when you've messed up what you're actually supposed to do is the bookshop's name inspector gregson can i ask you a favor what would you kindly add the name of the bookshop to your formal testimony please i believe it may be of vital importance maybe oh <laughs> well you know i mean yes it could be a very important clue very well not that i can see it being of any great significance but please revise your testimony accordingly inspector yes sir my lord whatever you say could the man be any more sardonic He was on his way home from Bourbon Books, a second-hand bookstore he apparently patronizes. Now, we can catch the inconsistency, which is that this is a receipt from your books. Objection! That's real dumb. Um, if, if I could just stop you there, Inspector Gregson. What is it, sunshine? I'm a busy man, you know. This is a receipt that we found in Mr. Natsumi's room. It was issued on the day of the incident and details the purchase of three secondhand books. And you found that in the accused room, did you? Yes, but the point is not where the receipt was found, but the name of the shop printed on it. Go on. This receipt was issued from a bookshop called Your Books. Your Books? Y-O-R-E, I presume? Yes, my lord. So Mr. Natsumi did not, uh, did indeed purchase a number of books at a second-hand bookshop that day. However, the bookshop in question was not Bourbon Books. Eh? What? Inspector, do you know of this other bookshop? Okay, yes, sir. Your books is another second-hand bookshop not far from Bourbon Books. It's just that... Well, it's such a small place, I, I didn't think the accused would have known about it. Objection! But in fact, that is the bookshop which the defendant visited on the day in question. And this receipt proves it. Objection! Yes, for what difference it makes. Whether the man purchased his musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. Objection! I disagree! I, I mean, after all, um... I have the street map here, if that might be of help. Yeah, deja vu. Oh, um, yes, thank you. Have a look at this, please. If the defendant had been returning from Bourbon Books, then yes, he would almost certainly have passed the place where Miss Green was attacked. However, if we take into account the fact that he was actually at another bookshop, your books, it may very well turn out that he wouldn't have passed that location at all. Could that be true? My, my. It rather depends on where this other bookshop is, but I do declare it might be a possibility. Is that right, Mr. Lawyer, sir? What you just said? Absolutely. It absolutely could be right. God damn, is Gregson cool. Inspector Gregson, where is this your book's establishment? Well, um, obviously we looked into that. Turns out that your books... ...is just here on the next corner of Mer Mearsham Street, going east. Local's map information has been updated to court record. Finally, we're getting somewhere. And there you have it, as you can clearly see now... Oh. Dude, pour me a glass of wine because this case is already getting on my nerves. My learned Nipponese friend is obviously in training to be a clown the way he regales us with such witticisms. And here it is. The beginning of Edgeworth and his clown speeches. <laughs> to your future career in the circus. <laughs> you put that glass down now, or I'll put it down for you. 
I um, didn't think I needed to spell it out, but here we go. If the accused was coming home from your books instead of bourbon books, there's no doubt he still would have passed the place where the victim was stabbed. Yes, thank you, Inspector. Ugh. See, so it was pointless. All of that effort just to end up in the exact same place. Allow me to reiterate from my learned friend, if somewhat slow, Nipponese friend. Wherever the man purchased his musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. I mean, yeah, just end the trial now. As I suspected, you can't fool me, and I don't suggest you try. What'd I say, eh? I've had enough of this now. Beg your pardon? Terribly sorry, but would you mind repeating that? Mr. Narahodo, we mustn't give up. What, what do you mean? If the prosecution's assertion is correct, the members of the jury may very well decide that Mr. Natsumi is guilty. <sighs> She's absolutely right. We must think. We must consider the assertion just put forward by the prosecution very, very carefully. They claim Soseki-san must have passed the location of the incident on his way home from your books. But, will obviously raise an objection. The assertion just made by the prosecution is fundamentally flawed. Explain yourself, counsel. Uh, yes, my lord. You, you can see what I mean on this map. When returning from your books to his lodging, Mr. Natsumi could have followed the route suggested by the prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to take between the two places. If the defendant used these streets, look what happens. He arrives back at his lodgings without passing the location where the victim was attacked. Objection! Talking back to a clown is a fool's errand, of course. However, I feel compelled to point out that... That route is what is re commonly referred to as the long way round. Ah. On a cold winter's night, why would any man choose to take a longer route home? Because our Japanese Charlie Chapman is paranoid and thinks people are following him. Well, um, uh... The answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't. In other words... The accused took the obvious route back to his lodgings and is the obvious perpetrator of this crime. Objection! But, 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 uh, yes, I've got it. Obviously, we must ask the man himself. Ask, Miss, ask Mr. Natsume which route he took home. I have already informed the court of the accused's response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. Huh. That's right. As I said, the bloke seems to spend his time outside wandering aimlessly from A to B. The day was no exception. He says he doesn't remember where he was or which route he took home. I don't... I don't believe this! Yeah, all that wasted time and effort. I thank you, my learned friend. And suggest that we do not waste any more of the court's time by wandering aimlessly around this subject. Pray, what say you insightful jurors? But, but even if that is the case, the defense still... I agree with Lord Von Zeeks. Wholeheartedly, and in every way. What? I don't believe it. Does, does this mean... We, members of the jury, are completely convinced now. 
Very well. In that case, I hereby call upon all members of the jury to present your findings to the court. Guilty! 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 Oh. Guilty! 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 I got now their voices right. But it's super cool that those were all voiced. It would appear the journey's leaning is unanimous. Summonation examination. To the insightful members of the jury, I applaud your brave resolve. You serve queen and country admirably. Mr. Narahodo. Summonation examination, come on. We know the drill. No, not yet. This isn't over yet. I still have one last chance to sway the opinion of the jury. I have to tip the balance of those skills the other way. I have to turn this around. Somehow. Hmm. Those are the eyes of Cory, not yet willing to give up and die. So I presume you intend to wield your rights again in this trial? Rights of the fence written into antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago. Call it antiquated if you will, but it's the defense's prerogative to carry out a summonation examination if it so chooses. Very well, counsel. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with a summonation examination. Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Of course we're ready. I'm all too familiar with that Nipponese whippersnapper and his onkis refusal to throw in his ally. Very well then. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what grounds you have determined the, the defendant to be guilty. And we will do that in the next episode. Because this is already an hour long. So. Um, as always. Thank you so much for watching. This was annoying. And I'm sorry I'm not better at spawning these stupid small differences. I still think that was bullshit. Yet somehow it only increased my respect for Gregson. You know, the fact that like, he's got almost every detail narrowed down. But yeah, so I'm gonna have to watch out for that. I want, that probably tripped up a lot of people playing the first time, because obviously you would think the location of the bookstore is the most important thing, but no, it's the name. Anyways, yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, stay safe, have fun, and have a great day.